What's going on? It's John Camucci, and today I got Lizzie McAlpine with me. What's up? Not much. <laughs> <laughs> How, How are, are you? you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm so sorry. I'm still a little bit out of breath, like seconds before you came in here. I was doing the ceiling sped up trend, <laughs> <laughs> and I was running through nice, these halls. Nice. I did it a couple of times. <laughs> I'm exhausted, so if nice, I smell, I'm so sorry. <laughs> it should just be a few minutes of this. Okay. Uh, do you watch those trends when you're on TikTok? Yeah, I repost everyone that I see. Do you really? Yeah, my free page. I love that. Is there one that stuck out to you that kind of shocked you a little bit? Um, Victoria Justice did one the other day. Uh -huh. I was like, that, I'm not going to lie right now. She, that was the first concert I ever went to see. Really? It was, it was Victoria Justice. So the full so circle moment of It was really of full circle, yeah, yeah, definitely. That's so cool. <laughs> is it shocking to you that Ceilings is the song off of Five Seconds Flat that is currently having this big of a moment? Like, I know your song with Phineas and a couple of other of those, um, a couple of other of those songs popped off, but this one is just... It's taken off to another level. Yeah, I was definitely not expecting it. Yeah. It was not the one that I had picked on the album to like have this moment. I can imagine. As you're going through that album, if you could have one of those songs switch places with Ceilings for a Day, like maybe one of the ones you thought would be a hit, what would you swap it with? Probably All My Ghosts. I like mm, that one. Okay. That's probably my favorite. Yeah. Uh, for me, that one's probably second next to um, Nobody Likes a Secret. I love that one I too. No one ever says that. Wait, song. really? It's kind of like a deep cut. I don't know. It's like kind of an interlude track, but I love that one. It's the deep cuts for me that do it. I, yeah, I feel like yeah, a, yeah. I'm an album guy. Mm -hmm. Like there are some people who just love singles and yeah. to each their own. But for me, like I really love the album because you get to see the the cuts of the songs that don't necessarily yeah. become the hits. Yeah, you see you see the journey. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Um. So I'm I'm thinking of just the trend again and, and how crazy it's been, and I feel like what's interesting is there are two. Different sides that I see. There's the sped up version of everyone doing this running track to it. But then mm -hmm. there's a lot of people still using the regular, the original ce uh, ceilings version. And they're like diving into what they call being ceilings girls. <laughs> have you seen these? I think so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I feel like every, you know, a lot of artists have their crew behind them, like the yeah. Beehive for Beyonce or whatever. But mm -hmm. I feel like ceilings girls is something that's really been taken off on my side of TikTok. I swear, I you're like... I don't know if I've actually seen that. Really? I don't know. Yeah, I feel like it's it's been right behind the trend for me. I swear, mm -hmm. for some reason, this month, it's like Lizzie McAlpine, cat TikTok. Lizzie McAlpine, <laughs> another two cat TikToks. <laughs> so it's just been all over my feed. Yeah. And it just seems like this song is resonating so well. Like, do you know what it is about ceilings that people seem to be clinging towards? I think it's just that... I don't know. I, I wrote the song about, like imagining a relationship oh, for me it was that I was re uh, reflecting on a relationship that it just ended but I think that it's really a universal feeling to like imagine like right when you start dating someone like imagine your whole life together and like yeah. if you see a stranger on the street like you know imagine that's me our entire <laughs> history to you know it's just like I think that's a pretty universal thing that like everyone does every now and again it's just like we're all a little bit delusional sometimes, For sure. you know, like <laughs> I think that's the beauty of that is like sometimes it's fun to not be so logical about yeah. falling in love yeah, or yeah, whatever yeah. it is. Um, where do you think that comes from? Just this this ache of kind of wanting to be delusional falling for <laughs> someone, because I feel like growing up, I grew up with a single mom yeah. and, and I don't really know where it came from, like why people gravitate to being so delusional about someone and why that's so appealing. I think it's just, I don't know, I'm just such a romantic and I just love the idea of love and I've always loved that. I mean, my parents were divorced, so like, it's, yeah. it's just like, I, I don't know, just in the media that I saw as a kid growing up, maybe like the movies or the TV shows, like, I don't know, it's just so easy to romanticize like that whole Are you thing. a fan of rom-coms? Yeah. Do you feel like rom-coms are different now than they used to be? Definitely. I feel like there's just so many good rom-coms in the early 2000s, yes, and now yeah, I feel definitely. like I'm not seeing them as much. Yeah, I would agree. And I, I wonder if I credit that to like why people are so obsessed with this. I mean, maybe rom-coms... Yeah, I mean, we're missing romance in the movies. Yeah. So we create it in our brains. A hundred percent. It's crazy. <laughs> so when you're... Because you're working on new music now, right? Yes, I am. How does the writing process from Five Seconds Flat differ from the place that you're in now working on new music? Hmm. Um, I think the my writing process is usually always the same. I kind of just write a bunch of songs by myself and then bring them to producers and we work on them together. But I'm definitely in a very different place as than I was when I was writing Five Seconds Flat. So the, the lyrical content of the songs are different um, just because I'm like going through different things. Yeah. And are you still writing about, is it always about things you're currently going through? 
Um, yeah, I mean, the stuff that is on my next record, I wrote a while ago, so I'm not currently going through that stuff anymore, but um, I was when I was writing the songs. Right, right. Yeah. So what's it like taking that kind of raw personal material and then bring it to a big stage when you're performing at a festival or at your headline show? Yeah, like, yeah. What is that like? Are it's you still feeling all those feelings? No. Sometimes it's hard to sing certain songs because I just like am reminded. I'm like taken back to that place that I was in when I wrote them. But but usually it's pretty easy to like kind of disconnect from that and just because at a certain point, like these songs have been out for a while now and um, I really just play them on tour for my fans because I know that everyone has, you know, their own special moment or memory to these songs. And so I really just like play them for my fans at that point. One of my favorite performances of yours, and, and I'm so curious about this, is the Tiny Desk. Mm. I love the Tiny Desk concerts. Thank I you. feel like I get stuck in those playlists. And yeah, I can watch oh, them. Yeah, 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 yeah. Me too. So I'm so curious. Is it a studio or is it literally like a room? It's literally an office. Is it really? Yeah, it's just a it's just an office in the NPR building. It's you, crazy. Are you looking at all the stuff on the shelves, or do you kind of just go yeah, in? Yeah. Oh yeah, I definitely like took a little browse, and he was like, "You can leave something." So I so I left a little. What'd you leave? Um, a little rose quartz on the shelf. Okay. Pink rose quartz. Uh, I'm also curious because when I was watching that Tiny yeah. Desk show, um, you said that in your notes back in 2019, you had a bucket list. Yes. Of I all still, the things you I wanted still to have do. It's all mine. What are I some other things? It. I check things off. Um, other things. I mean, win a Grammy. Yeah. That's okay. Like obviously. Shouldn't take too long. A big one. <laughs> um, and then there's like random things also. There's like, I want to act again. So there's like a bunch of acting things. I want to be on Broadway. I want to write a musical. Yeah, you didn't know, you like used to do Broadway show Or not Broadway specifically. <laughs> <laughs> shows? Never done Broadway. <laughs> right, right. Um, but yeah, I, was a th I did theater in high school. Do you think that influences the way you write music? Probably like a little bit subconsciously. It's, it's, I'm definitely not thinking about it as I'm writing, but... I love musicals and I've s my my grandparents would take it, me and my sister to see a Broadway show every year since I was nine. So like it's very ingrained in, in like who I am as a person. So I think it just like naturally comes out mm. into my songwriting, whether I want it to or not. <laughs> what is it about musicals? Is it the nostalgia of just going all the time as a kid or what do you love about them so much? I think that I it's just, oh gosh, uh, I just, uh, I think it's just like so beautiful the way that they tell stories and like the the I don't know the storytelling is just like so crazy I, I think I try and put a little bit of that into my into the way that I construct an album like definitely you know track list order and stuff I want it to feel like it's a story mm -hmm. um, I just love also like musical theater writers are just so good at that and good at storytelling and they're like lyrical and harmonic and melodic geniuses like I just think that it's just some of the best writing so ever. if you could get into it is it more the musical stuff you'd want to be or just straight up an actor both both I literally <laughs> want to do everything like you get my that. bucket list is long why well, limit yourself yeah right that is so cool so <laughs> the upcoming tour sold out so yes. fast what yes. does that feel like to watch all those days get sold out that quickly it's pretty crazy, honestly. I mean, before my first headline tour, I was very convinced that no one would show up and it would not sell out and no one would buy a ticket. And I was like really actually convinced. I was scared. I was really? like, and when it first, when it sold, it sold out like pretty fast, my first one. And I remember like my manager was like, oh yeah, it's sold out. And I was like, you're literally lying to me. Like, there's no way you're telling the truth. It has to be like bots, bought all of these. <laughs> like, there's no way that real people, I was, I had to be convinced until you show up on stage and see the people. Well, even before, like before my first show, I was like, "There's no, no one's gonna be there. I'm gonna walk on stage and there's gonna be no one there." That I was wrong, obviously. Yeah, I mean, but completely. like, <laughs> but I was, I was, I don't know. It was scary. Yeah, I, I was thinking back to the closing show of your last tour here in mm -hmm. LA, mm -hmm. and the fact that John Mayer was one of the people <laughs> that joined you on stage is so yeah, cool. Yeah, that was honestly that was pretty crazy. I can imagine that's got to be a bucket list item yeah, in itself. Yeah, 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 definitely. I gotta know though. What's it like hanging out with John Mayer? <laughs> <laughs> I've always I wondered I mean, this. he's just a regular person. Really? Yeah. Because I feel like I'm always watching a lot of his videos and stuff where mm -hmm. he's teaching guitar. I don't yeah. play guitar. <laughs> but I feel like I just sit there just and I'm just like, uh-huh. Yeah, right, Like right. someday <laughs> I might be able to. Yeah. Do you play guitar and piano? Yes, I play both. Got it. I and started on piano. So did I. That's, I can't say much after that. <laughs> I only played for a few years, but I still do. Yeah. Um, what piano did you learn on? 
I learned on my grandma's piano. So an older one. Mm-hmm. Do you? Does she still have it? Yes. I'm just curious because I, I still, my mom has our old piano and she's been trying to get rid of it forever. But mm-hmm. like I won't let her because it's the piano yeah. I learned on. And I still feel like when I play, that's my favorite piano to play on because mm-hmm. it's the one I learned on. And like when you learn to, I guess, put those feelings into music, that's yeah. where it comes out of. Do you feel that connection to your original piano? Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's not, it's not in my house. It's at my grandparents' house. Right. So, so when you don't I, see when it much. I, Yeah, but whenever I go to her house, I, I always play it. I love I have that. to, yeah. So um, what can you tell us about the new music coming out? It's definitely very different from Five Seconds Flat. It's more okay. in the vein of the first album, but it's not the first album. It's it's definitely what I think I actually sound like as an artist. I think I've been almost there a couple times in the past, but I feel like I've really tapped into like who I actually am, and it just it feels it feels really good, and it's some of the best stuff I've ever written. Really, I think. yeah. Do we still get? And I say this in a good way because I love sad boy music. Are we still <laughs> getting some sad boy, sad girl songs? Yeah, 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 of yes. course. It's it's very, it's, it's pretty dark, honestly. I love it. Oh <laughs> my God. It's like music to my ears. Well, I'm so excited. Liz and McAlpine, thank you so much yeah, for coming you for in and joining me.